I'm here at Ursula Franklin Academy where I'm going to be giving the keynote speech in less than 30 minutes. I'm really excited because we're discussing a topic that's very near and dear to me and that's mental health. So I cannot wait to get started. I'm a little bit nervous. I have a few butterflies in my stomach, but I know that the student body is going to rock with me and I'm very, very anxious to just be on the move. I have an assignment that my mentor gave to me. As you know, my mentor is Stuart Knight, renowned speaker and author. And he always tells me, Pollyanna, the best speakers in the world are funny. So share a funny experience or share a joke. Now, I never considered myself to be a funny person, but you know what? I'm trying a little something. So I'm really interested to see how the student body reacts. This could be really exciting and really funny, or it could completely bomb. So if they don't laugh, I'm going to feel a little bit dry, but hey worth a try, right? Okay, so let's get started. Enough with the talking and I can't wait to see you guys later. Before I get started, I want to take a little bit of a survey. Please raise your hand if you can confidently say that you know what depression is. I need to see them way up high. Okay, thank you very much. Now please raise your hand if depression has affected either you or someone that you know. Way up high. Okay, the reason why I ask these questions is because this conference is obviously not just about me. It's about all of us. Every single person in this room has a story. Every single person in this room has gone through experiences which has heavily shaped our lives. Like for instance, when I was a kid, my parents and teachers raised me up to believe that I should dream big and that I could be anything and everything I wanted to be. And with my wild imagination and endless creativity, I've always been the type of girl who saw the world through a different lens and dreamed in full color. But as I got older and entered high school, things changed. Because people started telling me that I now had to be more realistic. That I could have ambition, but just not too much. Because of course, that would require taking way too many risks, which could possibly lead to disappointment and failure. So as a result of this, I was encouraged to play it safe. And I constantly felt so confused and felt as if I was constantly searching for something that was missing from my life, whether that was my confidence and self-esteem, acceptance from my peers, or my purpose in this world. You see, not knowing my next steps or how to handle some of life's biggest challenges, that was terrifying to me. And it seemed even worse the more I started comparing myself to other people in my school who just made it look so easy and seemed as if they had it all together. I wanted nothing more than to get rid of my anxiety, so I would often cover it up with a smile. And whenever someone would ask me how I was doing, I'd look at them and use my favorite F word. Whenever someone would ask me how I was doing, I'd say, I am fine. I'm fine. Don't worry about it. I'm fine. That was my answer for everything. It was also the easiest way for me to get out of any conversation. But today I'm not here to teach you about the easy way out because I can tell you from personal experience that taking the easy way out doesn't solve anything. Today when you leave this auditorium, I hope that you have a better understanding of three key things. Number one, life throws us curveballs for a reason. Number two, you can bounce back from any setback and number three, I'm gonna teach you my happiness formula, which I created in 2012, and it hasn't failed me since. Listen, a lot of us use the F word. I mean, how many of you have already dropped a few F bombs this morning? You told someone you're fine. <laughs> I want you to turn to your neighbor and I want you to say, no more F bombs. Or 
they're suffering in silence. So that brings me to another reason why I'm here. I'm here not only to share my struggle with depression, but I'm also here to be a voice for anybody in this room, adults included, who is struggling to find theirs. So my story. My story starts in high school when I was your age. And during my teenage years and my early 20s is when I endured some of the worst years of my life. In high school, I was severely bullied for the way I walked, talked, dressed, who I hung out with. I was alienated and tormented so much that I didn't even attend my prom in my senior year. You see, the only places I ever felt safe in this world was when I was eating lunch by myself, neither the library, the cafeteria, or quietly in one of the stalls of the girls' washroom. From grade nine to grade 12, four years of my life, while I, uh, while I watched other teens have the time of their lives, little did my peers know that I was crying myself to sleep. That I was crying myself to sleep every single night and waking up every single day hoping to die because of the drama that just followed me around everywhere. But in order to escape from my chaotic teenage life, I wrote into a journal every single day. How many of you love to uh, express yourselves creatively through acting, singing, dancing, writing? Raise your hand up high, don't be ashamed of it. Okay, awesome, so we're on the same team, it's great. <laughs> so I loved writing in my journal because I could vent and I could say whatever I wanted without any interruptions. And during this time was when I was the most at peace and the most happiest, so I knew that writing was a career path I really wanted to explore. In 2005, my senior year in high school, I remember, you know, kicking back in the classroom, just feeling really frustrated with myself because it seemed as if everyone knew exactly what they wanted to do with their lives, and I was still contemplating whether or not I was emotionally and mentally ready to go to college. You see, while my peers aspired to be princesses, police officers, lawyers, and doctors, I wanted to be a writer. I thought writing was super cool. I mean, if you really think about it, we would not have some of our favorite books, movies, television shows, and music if it wasn't for writers. Writers make a global impact. They educate, they entertain, they inspire. Why wouldn't I want to become a writer? But whenever I would share this passion with other people, I received so much negativity from my friends, family members, and even my teachers who doubted my capabilities and told me I'd never make it. You see, to my friends, becoming a writer was not the cool thing to do. To my family, becoming a writer was not a financially stable career choice. And to my teachers, well, my grades weren't good enough. And it probably didn't help my case that I failed grade 11 and 12 English either. So needless to say, negativity and lack of support were my first obstacles. And when you have a thousand no's coming at you all at once, it does not encourage you to move forward. So I went to my parents and I took a stand. I said, Mom, Daddy, I need you to cut me some slack here. I need a break. I want to take a year off in between high school and college because I need to figure my stuff out. I'm confused more than anything, and I feel like I'm being pulled in so many directions. What do you think my parents said? They said, hell no, girl. I'm going to get you a little butt in school. Choose something that's going to be financially rewarding to help you pay the bills and move forward with your life. So like a good girl, I listened to my parents. And I ended up graduating high school feeling very low and confused. And I entered a college program that was not only chosen by my parents, but it wasn't a true representation of the type of young professional I aspired to become. I have two questions for you now. Have you ever felt sadness that was so intense that it lasted longer than just a few days? Or have you ever felt so miserable or so hopeless that you truly believed your life would never get better, would never improve, or that you were in a situation that you couldn't control? In 2006, my freshman year of college, this was me. In 2006 is when I really started to experience symptoms of depression and anxiety on a severe level. I mean, as I continued to pursue a diploma program that I hated, I lacked focus. And it showed in my grades, my work ethic, and my attendance. I would stay in bed for days and days and days. I would shut out friends and family 
and I was constantly panicking about what the next phase of my life would look like and if I'd even make it through the day. As this book continued to play in my head, eventually I listened. So I was a follower, I was a leader. And I tried to commit suicide twice, but I had two failed attempts. And in the stillness of those moments, at the crossroad between life and death, I realized something. I realized that I was being given another chance to fight for the things that I love. I realized that as long as that I was alive, there must be a purpose for my life. And so as soon as I took that breath, I set out on a brand new mission to figure out exactly what my purpose was. So at this point, I had had enough of other people in their negativity. And I finally gained the courage to tell myself that this was my life and my dreams were worth it. I want to hear you guys say that. This was my, this is my life and my dreams are worth it. No, 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 no. You guys put a little more uh in it. This is my life and my dreams are worth it.
years later, I work as a nationally published journalist who's interviewed celebrities from across the world. My articles have been published inside the pages of the National Post, the Toronto Star, the Toronto Sun, and the Vancouver Sun. I'm also a best-selling author of the book, Everything I Couldn't Tell My Mother, and a motivational speaker who travels across North America, empowering young adults to see beyond the limits of their circumstances and become a better version of themselves. You guys, I literally started with only a number two pencil and a dream. There's no secret formula. Every single day, I took baby steps, and I worked towards the goals that I had for myself. If nothing else, I want you to remember one thing. I want you to remember that everyone is born with a purpose. It's just that some people spend their entire lives searching for this purpose without even realizing that we already possess the tools we need to reach maximum fulfillment. You see, no matter what goal you want to pursue, no matter what background you come from, no matter what background you come from, we all have the desire to succeed. The only difference would be how we each attain that success. You see, your journey will be completely different than mine, right? Your journey will be unique and beautiful in its own way. And just for the record, I am not encouraging anybody to drop out of school. That was pretty much a decision that I made because I thought it was best for me at that time. At the core of my message, I'm simply asking you to spend less time photoshopping perfect selfies for Instagram and Facebook and spend more time working on yourselves. And when I say yourself, I mean your mental health. And what you can do is you can start by speaking your truth. Whenever somebody asks you how you are doing, do not drop F-bombs or pretend as if everything's fine or pretend as if your life is perfect. Because when you speak the truth and break your silence and your words are consistent with how you really feel, you can begin the process of picking up the pieces of your life putting them back together, and other people in your support group can help you.